So this is absolutely crazy. Eric, just listen to this. Inside linebacker. Not outside linebacker. Not edge rusher. Inside linebacker. Six foot six, 215 pounds. What is up, everybody? It is Jake with Master of Football back at it again. Happy Monday. Thank you so much for being here. If you want to be up to date on everything, college football, pro football, Madden, EA college football, NFL draft, anything related to American football, hit the red subscribe button. You will not be disappointed. Also hit the like button too. And comment on Twitter slash X. That fam is growing. Without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, guys. Zero week has concluded. And again, new look here for me. Okay, got a little different angle. You can literally see my bed. It's right here. But uh, what I want to talk about, again, zero week, because there's a couple of things here. Most of the zero week action, Louisiana Tech, Florida International, Jacksonville State, UTEP. Some of those games are not going to have national championship implications. Now, very important. I love college football. I love all those games. So I watched as many of them as I could, recorded them. Even San Diego State and Ohio in that weird slugfest. Dude, if you've never watched San Diego State football before, it always looks like that. They're a pretty good team, but they're super scrappy. It's never really like a beautiful game. But again, they come out with a win more often than not. Now, talking about something related to what Colin Cowherd and Greg McElroy talked about on one of their podcasts recently, because I think that there's again two games that were really important. We're only going to talk about one, but it's really important to understand if you're not a top flight SEC team, Georgia, if you're not, you're going to be Alabama. It's really hard to compete with those teams. However, you can in one way this way that's talked about right here. So on Greg McElroy's show here with a, a collaboration here with Colin Cowherd, who's part of the, you know, the volume, which is his own little thing. In addition to he works for Fox Sports. But anyway, it's a little bit of cross nation action for the networks here. Now, one thing he said here, the line, the line down here you can see is it says, can Cinderella still happen in college football? For the most part, they still can. There is a very serious uh, asterisk around that. For the most part, and people talk about the SEC is such a great conference. In reality, it's not. It's really, it has top flight teams that are capable of winning the national championship, and it has the most number of those teams. There's been, in the last 25, 30 years or so, there's been about half of them, including Texas and Oklahoma, who have won a championship. Big Ten is a top flight league, more so than the fact that a lot of people watch it. There's really only Ohio State and Michigan. USC enters eventually, and Penn State kind of is on the, the, you know, the ins and outs of that there. But talking about can you still beat a top flight Georgia as in last year's? Can you still beat an Alabama as they've won? They've won six championships in the last 10, you know, 20 years or so. Can you still do that? You can still do that under one condition. If you have a generational type quarterback, a really, really special guy, first round draft pick, something to that effect. You can go out there and compete against them, even if you only have 85% of their roster. It's really important to remember that here. So you could do that. I mean, last year when, when you know, uh, CJ Stroud and Ohio State played against uh, Al Georgia, it was a situation where, I mean, Georgia had way more first round picks on their team, but a couple of really good receivers, good quarterback, you can move the ball on them. Ultimately, Georgia won, but you can still compete at that level. Think about that. The four seed was one kick away from beating the one seed. Everybody says, oh, SEC dominance. But again, it came down to a special teams kicker. Nobody's talking about how good the kickers are in the SEC versus the Big Ten. But in that instance, if that kick would have been good, Georgia wouldn't have been in the national championship. And I talk about that understanding that all you need is a special quarterback and about 85% of the roster to beat those teams. I talk about the USC Trojans. So the USC Trojans came out the other day and they played San Jose State's Spartans. Now, San Jose State, Siobhan Cordero, he was the Mount, reigning, he's the projected Mount West player of the year so far. He's a preseason favorite. He's really, really solid. He comes out here, he has three touchdowns against them. He has 17 incomplete passes. So again, an, an issue there, not necessarily great. But you see the fact that USC, so many weapons. You come down here and check what they had. Marshawn Lloyd transferred from South Carolina. They got yeah, Zachariah Branch, who is an absolute beast, one of the top you know, 100 players in the country. Dorian Singer, a transfer from Arizona. They've got so many dudes out here that can absolutely play. Brendan Rice, is, uh, Jerry Rice's son, he had a 12-yard touchdown catch. They are absolutely loaded from head to toe on offense. And for those of you who remember what I said, I said they're, they're loaded on head to toe on offense. There's been a lot of questions about the USC defense. Last season was in the, in the hundreds. They were not a very solid defense. And you can see that in their record and what they did because they were they won basically one way. They won an absolute shootout. They had a really good turnover forcing defense, which is a really interesting thing to see. But there was a certain type of team that they had struggles with playing last season. And you'll see that on their schedule right here. So when you check out the USC Trojans schedule, you see the first game, they scored 66 points, then 41, then 45, and then they had a little bit of a struggle game, but then they scored 42, they scored 30, they scored 42, and they lost. 
45, 41, 55, 48, 30, set, 38, 24, and then 45, even in a loss there. Now you think about that right there. Again, they scored a lot of points, even if they lose those games. They lose in certain instances, and they have issues in certain instances. Those instances are Oregon State. Oregon State's quarterback had four picks in this game, but the game it was entering the fourth quarter. USC was down 7-3. to three. Again, Oregon State, a line them up, run it down your throat, kind of a ball club, and it was a very close game down. Utah. Now, they won in a shootout, which is very interesting to see that. They won in a shootout, but Utah, as two max, they call dives. They call, you know, they're pulling guards. They, they're definitely a power team that goes right at you. And then again, they lost in the championship game here to Utah. They, 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 just, had a, they just have a hard time with Utah. So those types of teams, Oregon State, Utah, Utah, two, three games. They lost by one. They lost by 23, and they won by three on the road. Very, very difficult for them to play those types of teams. And you think about that going forward. How are they going to be able to handle it? I know they lost to Tulane. Tulane was just a crazy up and down game. One team was going to win, one team wasn't. And again, usually, you know, Caleb Williams is going to be able to pull you out from that uh, situation, but wasn't able to do it this year. Much of the issues with that team is the fact that the USC Trojans have been, some people would say, I don't want to say soft up front. You guys come at me and let me know. They, they've definitely been a little undersized, a very fast attacking defense, big plays, you know, good or bad. They get a lot of turnovers, but they also give up a lot of, you know, yards and things to that nature. So what is going to happen with the defense this season? I know that in the off season, again, the very first season, they brought in a ton of guys, Mario Williams. They brought in Jordan Addison. They brought in Caleb Williams. They brought in a bunch of dudes on offense to address that side of the ball. Defense kind of had some issues this season. There's been a, t even with the fact they gave up 28 points to a pretty solid Mountain West team. And again, I will say a pretty solid Mountain West team. We'll see how San Jose State does. But they generally do a pretty good job against a pretty good player. And they do that because not only in the fact they have a couple of good players, Damani Jackson was a top 10, was a top flight player. They've got a really good safety. They added in a ton of transfers this year. And I want to go over them because the defense looks like it's got a ton more talent than it did last year. The first player that absolutely made a giant impact was Mason Cobb. Mason Cobb is an inside linebacker, played at Oklahoma State for the last couple seasons. He was all Big 12 second team in 2022. Really, really solid player there. He comes over, he's 6 feet, 235, number 13. If you ever watched the, the game, I had to watch it online because unfortunately the Pac-12 doesn't have very much exposure with its uh, TV deal. So I had to watch it online on, on YouTube with some highlights. But you'll see number 13 on the USC defense. Absolutely was all over the place. Really excited about what he's doing in this attacking style defense. And I know they brought in a lot of defensive linemen here. In my personal opinion, the one that had the biggest impact in, on the defensive front was uh, Jamil Muhammad. He was a really unique guy. Came over from Georgia State. He actually played quarterback at one point. Now his final year of eligibility, 6'1", 250, edge rusher, number 10. He also had a really good game here. I mean, he had a pass deflection. He had a forced fumble. He had a couple tackles for loss. He was all over the field. He's the type of guy that's going to help you come over the edge. Is he a 300-pounder? No, but he's a really good edge rusher that they didn't have last season. But speaking about big old 300-pounders here, we got your boy Bear Alexander who came in. Number 90 looked really good too. So 6'3", 300, comes over from IMG Academy, and he played at Georgia last season. Comes over to USC, starts right away. Really, really, again, he looks like he's going to be the kind of guy they really need. He, they really need him because, again, we mentioned this before, I mean, 300-pounders on Georgia's defensive line is nothing special. They've got multiple 300-pounders. Alabama, all those teams, that is not an issue for them. USC is not as heavy and dense or as athletic with their 300 pounders as you can see with Georgia and with you know uh, Alabama but Bear Alexander is one of those guys that literally comes over from Georgia so he's one of the bigger defensive linemen on this team and he was probably one of the more average offensive linemen for Georgia that's how good their defensive line is and Texas A&M gosh I tell you what that recruiting class was so amazing for everybody else but you guys because <laughs> Anthony Lucas comes over. You see the fact he was one of those guys with the most amazing recruiting class ever assembled on a team that won five and seven. Well, he goes to Texas A&M. He gets his nice payday, and now he's off to USC. Comes over from Chappelle High School outside in uh, you know, Scottsdale, Arizona, but he looked really good too. Did he have as many plays as Jamil Muhammad? Not necessarily, but I think he's the type of guy that 6'5", 265 at defensive and edge rusher. He looks really, really solid. I'm excited to see what he can do too. And I got to represent for my non-melanated brother out here. So your boy Tackett Curtis, he kind of had a weird situation where not many people really recruited him, but he comes over from, I don't know if it's Manny or many Louisiana, but he's inside linebacker, 6'2", 225. 
him, Mason Cobb, really aggressive guys out there. They've got these this weird amoeba defense. They've got tons of guys who are kind of, this, you know, smaller but very fast. Reminds me of a Dan Quinn defense when he was out at Atlanta, when they went to, the, you know, really, really good defensive coordinator because what he would do is he basically said every position other than a defensive or other than nose tackle, I'll take speed over size any day. Tackett, Curtis, we're seeing all those guys out there. They're not necessarily super big. I know Barry Alexander is, but smaller guys really attacking, really like to go after it for the Alex Grinch, the defensive coordinator for USC's defense. And Alex Grinch, speaking of your boy here, so again, he's been all around the whole place. He played uh, you know, strong safety at Mount Union. Uh, he was, uh, before USC last season was his first year as defensive coordinator, he was defensive coordinator and safeties coach for the Oklahoma Sooners. And then he was co-defensive coordinator for Ohio State in 2018, Washington State's defensive coordinator in 2015, 16, and 17. And then he was a position coach before that. He has a very, very particular style of defense. One thing that they did a lot in this game was something called a double a gap look it's a really unique look a lot of people do it in the nfl i really like it because again if you have a lot of guys who are similar size and athleticism you can really get after it and blitz from a lot of different angles and they were a very aggressive defense showing that in lots of blitzes too so this right here is a double a gap look you can see that you got a defensive end here a defensive lineman here a defensive lineman here a defensive end here defensive end here and then we've got two linebackers here in the a gap this is really hard because typically there's five offensive linemen and they've got six guys showing pressure the offense typically has to have an unbalanced a situation like this where running back is over here, tight ends over here, because if they're both on, one, both on one side, then they'll just blitz everybody over here. You can bring a lot of unique blitzes from this perspective. Again, this is a pass defense type of defense. You can't really line up on this on first down and do this because people will just run right at you. But it's a really unique look that really stresses offensive linemen. You get a lot of free rushers. You can bring a lot of really, really crazy blitzes because one thing about USC's defense, they've got certainly a unique look from them again one of the most unique players who i'm not sure if he could play on he probably could but it would be really weird his most important defense to play on for this player is the usc defense because of how aggressive it is and it's eric gentry so this is absolutely crazy eric just listen to this inside linebacker not outside linebacker not edge rusher inside linebacker six foot six 215 pounds i mean that, that sounds like a that sounds like a small forward but he is an inside linebacker at USC. Seven-foot wingspan, really unique body type for them. But again, Alex Grinch's defense, you can take people who are a little bit smaller, maybe a little more, you know, you can get somebody a little more slender, a little, you know, smaller, but quicker. Somebody like Eric Gentry, he's a very unique body type that probably would, he could probably play in other defenses, but his top defense that he would play in, he most effective defense, would be Alex Grinch's very attacking style defense. 6'6", 215, really unique. Like you said, a lot of people are like, oh, we're going to run the ball right at him. Well, now they got Barry Alexander in front of you now. they got Jamil Muhammad, who's coming off the edge. They've got a couple more guys here who are able to help out Eric Gentry. Eric Gentry last season, I'm assuming that when they would play somebody like Utah, he would probably get washed in a, a run play or something like that. Now, got a little bit more protection up front. Somebody like him, a very unique contributor to their defense. Certainly, it's, it's, it's a matchup problem in a lot of ways. Might be a matchup nightmare for them, too, in certain ways. But Eric Gentry, a classic case of why Alex Grinch's defense, it's a really unique style of defense. Like I said, they emphasize speed and athleticism over size. We'll see how they can do because, like we said, they've got a couple opportunities down the stretch here where they're going to be stretched. They're going to be tested in a physical way is what we'll say. So home against San Jose State, you knew they were probably going to win. They were favored by 30 points. They won by 28. I actually got won some money. on that. That's all I want to say here. And then we got Nevada. They should be able to handle that. Stanford is always interesting. I think they should be able to handle that too. At Arizona State, who's coming fresh off their self-imposed bull ban. Again, new coach. We'll see what happens there. Colorado is going to be a spread up-tempo team. So this is just a, a score fest between Colorado and USC. I anticipate USC is going to handle that. Arizona, I think Arizona is probably a year out away from being a really com a true competitor. I like what they're doing. I like you, Jed Fish. But then we come to two straight games here. Again, you look at the end of the schedule. UCLA is going to be an up-and-down game because it's a rivalry game. Oregon and Washington are really good. These last three games are going to be really tough. But I personally think, based on what we've seen last year and what we have right now, I'm most interested in Saturday, October 14th, and Saturday, October 21st. Eight-day period. You're going to have two of the most physical matchups you have right here. I just watched Notre Dame. at uh, You play at Notre Dame. It's going to be on NBC. Joe Alt, the left tackle. You got Sam Harmon. You got a 230-pound running back. There's a lot of interesting things happening with Notre Dame. They are a physical team. Can that defense handle them? I know they won last year. But this year, it looks like Notre Dame is actually going to be able to score on you as opposed to last season. So we'll see what happens there. Notre Dame, physical team, 
USC, a fast defense. We'll see what they can do. And then, obviously, October 14th, Utah at home. We'll see. Dude, I'm telling you, that is going to be, they're going to want that one really, really bad. They lost last year at Salt Lake. They lost in the Pac-12 championship game. They, they really want this game. But again, those two style of teams here, they're going to be running the ball right at you. Can USC, with their unique size, handle that? We will see. So we've always known that USC has enough on offense to win a national championship. They've got an amazing quarterback, Dorian Singer. They've got Zachariah Branch, the top fly player who got a kick return for touchdown. They are good over there. You talk about the defense. Does Bear Alexander add enough up front on the defensive line? Does Jaleel Muhammad add on the edge? What are you going to do? There? Is Eric Gentry 6'6", 215? Is he gonna, still going to be able to play like he can and play well with the protection of those guys up front? We will see because if USC can get... 80 to 85% of what Georgia or Alabama's defense can do, they can win the national championship. However, if they only get like 60, like 50, like 40%, they're going to have some issues in those playoff games. It might not even make it out of the Pac-12. All right, guys, get in the comments right now. What do you think of my assessment so far? Did you watch the game? I know you probably can't watch it on TV unless you have. Uh, it's, it's a huge mess. It's part of the reason why the Pac-12 is falling apart. But go check out that game if you can. USC versus San Jose State. Watch some of the highlights. I'll tell you right now. I believe that this offense is fully capable. The defense looks improved. They look like they're more talented. Whatever they were last year, they are a more talented version of that. Is that enough to push them into the national championship conversation? I don't know, but we'll see. All right, guys, thank you so much for being here. Remember, please like, share, comment, subscribe. Do all that stuff. I really appreciate it. That's it for me, guys. I'll see you guys later. I am out.